Okie doke. So yeah, I'm doing this video primarily for uh, Hoser House Rules. Uh, it's basically to show him uh, the activa activation system, uh, the, uh, the command and control of what I do for my miniatures. This is more or less would be set up for if I'm not all the train or anything. I'm just doing this bare bones. Um, this would be basically set up, I guess, for like six players if I was going to run it at a convention. Um, it's uh, and it's uh, you'll see the real system. It's very it's just uh, I would have to be there kind of thing to like go over it It's just like almost like a quick reference sheet uh, thing in the jig, but um, for hoser house rules um, I mean, it's heavily DBA based so I'm, I'm not gonna have to go through all the uh, the little bits uh, I'll go over some stuff for other viewers if you're not uh, uh, You're not too uh, you, you don't know too much about DBA or what have you um, and it's the rule system is easily adaptable back to DBA-ish uh, ways of doing combat, which is to one die six. The modifiers, it's just you'll just up or down, like, you know, plus one or minus one, as you'll see in a minute. But because of conventions, I find uh, people really like uh, playing with, like, a lot, lots of dice. I'm using, uh, I do buckets of dice, so instead of the modifiers of, like, plus one or plus, you know, minus one to your die roll, it's just one extra die. Um, and so on and so forth. You'll see. Anyways, I've got it set up here. I'll just move all the stuff out of the way. The reason why I have these things here, and this is the command and control uh, setup. So as you know, with DBA, uh, you roll for pips. Um, so you would get uh, one to six, and that's basically how many uh, orders you can give your army, uh, essentially. I'm not going to get into all of whatever. So, I just, so what I did is, and yet again, everything you're going to see is nothing that I've made up myself it's just i've you know big borrowed and s stolen from other people and just stuck them together it's just a frankenstein's monster type rule you know a little variation what a, that type of stuff so anyway so you basically essentially get one free move uh, we're gonna so what i should do is before we'll start off so this will be the command thing so you will get one free move if you ever uh pull out the red cube that's it that's the end of your move kind of thing and we're gonna what we would normally do. Hold on, I gotta hold on. I'm gonna hit pause. This may not be the best time to be doing this video, but it's been over a week that I wanted to do this, and I need the table back to be honest with you for my other stuff. So that's why I'm doing it. Uh, it's just I seem to be dying from allergies or something right now. Anyway, so what I n would do now is for each side. So each so there's three sides a piece here. I've got it uh, basically the Kushites um, versus the Assyrians. It's just you know, like I said, just made up. And I've got a, a slight, so I'll, I'll go over quickly with the troops here. So actually on the, uh, well, actually, well, no, well, so you can see what they actually look like facing kind of thing. So on the right, on the Kushite right flank, they actually have three heavy chariot, a Judean um, heavy chariots here. And then this are the, uh, the actual Kushite um, troops. So you've got some skirmishers, which I call uh, in DBA, it would be Siloy or Siloy. Uh, and then I've got what I call war, uh, war band, um, like I said, you're going to see in the bit, it's just, and it's also, uh, if I was going to do it, my if I'd go, if I was going to start from scratch, I would have put everybody on square bases and I would have got, if, if I'd known that I was going to go so far away from DBA, I, I, I you know, I just didn't know at the time. Anyways, uh, like I said, I'm not going to get into the, all the little uh, ins and outs of this. I just, it's primarily just to show the movement and command structure. We'll get into that, but I'll go very quickly with the, the guys here. So we've got a line of skirmishers. Some Couché cavalry here. Um, what I call war band. It doesn't matter. It's just as long as there's three infantry, more or less, kind of thing on a, on a stand. I'm very loose also with uh, the, the rule system. I'm not into like, oh my gosh, uh, you know, you're one whisker away from a base width, so therefore you're no. no I'm, it's usually I do it within like the rounding kind of thing. If you're you're under a base width, a uh, half a base width, we go with that. Like it's you know, give or take kind of thing. Anyways, then we've got um, what I call, uh, hold on, it's been so freaking long, light bow, and then uh, some more skirmishers, then we've got some uh, Kushite regulars, which I call, then we've got some Egyptian uh, heavy archers, some Egyptian regulars, these I'm calling, uh, these are some uh, Kushite veterans, um, it doesn't matter. You, it, there's just designations, uh, and then some more Egyptian uh, regulars. Yet again, more Egyptian regulars, more Egyptian regulars. Uh, it, you want them? 
uh, Egyptian heavy archers, some Egyptian cavalry, and then their left wing, which are the Philistines, and they've got some sweethearts, um, which is, this is the reason why on the left, we're well, going to see the Assyrians in a minute. So you've got, uh, you've got a line of uh, two stands of uh, regulars, then you've got a, a stand of veterans, two more stands of regulars, some war band, uh, your light chariot general. It doesn't and you're going to see for the command and control. It's not the end of the world if you lose your general. Um, and then some more light chariots and uh, some skirmishers. And then hold on, I'm going to hit pause so I can flip to the other side, kind of thing. And maybe we'll go left to right. So normally, if from what I know of Assyrian um, uh, military tactics, they usually had the left. Uh, uh, the left wing was the or. Uh, the left-hand man, if you want to call it that, for the Assyrian uh, king is, would be the most important part. But because the Philist, uh, the Kushites who are defending put the Philistines, their big boys kind of thing, on the left wing, um, the Assyrian general did the same more or less. So uh, they've got some light, uh, light chariots here, uh, a big line of heavy archers with some skirmishers in the front. And in my rule system, I'm just going to tell you very quickly, as long as you're uh, within direct base contact kind of thing, um, in front, the heavy archers or anybody with ranged combat can shoot uh, directly over. So skirmishers are great for, uh, in my world, uh, they're great for doing basically harassing the other side, like disrupting. I have disruption in, in my world. And um, they can do limited range contact. They're just basically to slow down and, and you know, uh, whittle, make you a little bit not as strong as you were before the, uh, the real people pop in kind of thing. Then we've got a line of regulars. And then we've got some veterans, and then now we get into the um, the Assyrian central, uh, the, the the center, uh, with some cavalry, more skirmishers, and like I said, you got some skirmishers sc uh, screening their heavy archers, and then we've got some veterans, and then uh, down to some regulars, um, massed infantry, which would be called a horde in DBA. And uh, then we've got some, uh, these are Syro can uh, Canites, um, and uh, those are regulars, another, uh, some more massed infantry, uh, war band, lots of war band, more massed infantry, some light chariots, and uh, heavy archers in the back. And hold on, I'll show you the, well, actually I can just zip over very quickly, and then the, um, the heavy archer general and whatnot. So what would happen now is, as we would get everybody going on, let's see if I've got a D6 lined up over here. Yeah, I'll just grab this one randomly. So basically each side would roll, each person would roll, and if they get a one, uh, hold on, i got to blow my nose again. So if they would get a one, that's so basically what you're rolling is to see how the gods uh, favor you. So if you get a one, the gods do not favor you. If you get a six, uh, so what that means is you would actually get an extra red uh, cube put in your sock. And, which is obviously going to cause an extra uh, a pot potential that you're going to you know uh, stop your turn, um, and a six would be the gods favor you, so you'd get an extra green one. What ends up happening for the command and control, and we'll do that quickly. There's just a bunch of little guide stuff I have. Let's just do one. So basically, what it's very free. There's no wheeling in this. There's no groups. There's none of that stuff. It's everybody's kind of the way it is. So let's just do one. Uh, uh, actually, it should be the uh, attackers first, so let's switch over here. Hold on. And here are the rules, uh, very or the quick reference sheet, very quickly. And I'll pop this out, uh, pop this up for anybody who wants to see it. So there you go. So it shows you the movement and good going and rough going. And as you can see, chariots do not. I only have two goings in in this world uh, for now. Uh, it's still, you know, whatever in progress. I'm not, <laughs> not going to be publishing this or anything. For goodness sakes. Uh, there's only uh, uh, two goings, good going and rough going. And this is the beauty of uh, the difference between chariots, uh, or especially light chariots and cavalry, is that cavalry are basically just better better chariots in a sense. They got rid of the chariots. And so you do not want to have your chariots going into hills. You don't want your chariots doing all kinds of things. Uh, same as a lot of uh, people, as you're going to see later on. So here's the combat factors. So that would be what you would need to hit on a die six to make a hit against uh, various people, or if you're gonna play the convention thing, that would be how many dice you would roll. So for example, if you were a, a heavy chariot uh, going up against, and you roll both together, so it's simultaneous. When you make a, con a combat, a close combat, not ranged combat, for ranged combat, uh, what you do is um, 
both roll, but it would, uh, it, you know, obviously if you win the combat and you're uh, uh, the target, um, nothing happens to the people raised. It's just there's no effect kind of thing. So let's say if you were a heavy, uh, heavy chariot and you were going up against uh, veterans, you would roll three dice or um, you would need three or higher on, on your, your, you get the idea. But, and then here's the various modifiers. And then the effects, which is if you see DBA, you'd be like, okay, I get this idea. But there's a lot more now, as you can see, push back and disrupted. I have disruptions. And I just use tiny little uh, bits of cotton batten. I just pretend uh, if you're playing Napoleonics, I guess it would be like, you know, a puff of smoke. I'm just using it like clouds, uh, dust in their eyes kind of thing. It doesn't matter. And so you can see there, it's, so you, it's a roll of five or six. You get a hit and so on and so forth. And. I'm not going to get into whatever. I want to show you the uh, the command and control. So basically, this is what ends up happening. As long as you move forward in a straight line and... Um, sorry, hold on. I'm going to blow my nose again. So as long as you move forward in a straight line and do not enter an enemy zone of control, which is a, a, a base width away, uh, and um, you're good. You You don't have to draw from here. You can just go straight and everybody can go. As soon as anybody makes a funky move or a special move, as in, for example, <clears throat> let's say, uh, or let's say remove a disruption. Let's say this person had a puff of smoke and I wanted to say, okay, I'm going to use, I'm going to use a, a, a command or whatever to remove that puff of smoke so I can make this perfect person bigger. Well, that's it. You, you now have to start drawing from a, the sock, like, uh, as you can see. So you put the, the cubes in and maybe I'll do a practice one, but you get the idea. Um, so you have to be kind of careful, or at least I find I have to be kind of careful uh, deciding who I'm going to move first and so on and so forth because I can cause myself an issue of, oh shoot, I did have a bunch of free moves available, and but now I don't. And what ends up happening, of course, is as combat uh, takes place and disruptions occur and so on and so forth, uh, command and control just falls apart fast. Um, you're draw at least I find I'm drawing from the sock awfully quick. I always get one free move, but after that, uh, you know, I, I want to start doing all kinds of things and it's like, well, it's going to cause me headache. Jeez, hold on. Let's try and pu uh, push this out a little bit with my beautiful Syrian, uh, Canites or Canaanites or whatever. I love these guys to bits. Not, uh, they're not the best painted guys that I had, but they, um, way outplayed they, they were way out of their league against some babylonians in one of my games and they way outperformed it was incredible uh, they got their asses kicked in the end but uh they it was just amazing so here we go so i'm like i said i can do any oh yeah and these guys actually to move uh more than one base with uh uh they you need a you would have to force them a command it's just momentum or whatever like they're a, a lot of inertia you gotta push push move move that's about it, really. So it would just be, you know, for example, and then it's, you know, the bait, uh, whatever uh, thing. So that would be a free move. You know, I'm just saying, I'm not going to get into the whatever. So you get the idea. Maybe I'll have to do a second video. Maybe this is just a terrible video. But it, once I start doing something, for example, like this, that would be it. I, that's my free move in, in a sense of uh, now I'm forced. Anything after that, I have to start um, drawing from the sock. Uh, except, I think, skirmishers uh skirmishers uh, sorry skirmishers are allowed to move in any door you can do anything you want uh these little these little two guys here i can do anything i want like i can move them around it doesn't cause me a free move they're a freebie however if i want to start moving these skirmishers after i had done let's say this move with some uh you know regular forces if you want a bit more uh formed troops um I would now have to start drawing from the sock anyways for these skirmishers. I can't start uh, willy-nilly doing whatever. Hopefully that gives you an idea. I know that wasn't probably, this isn't probably a great uh, video uh, of whatever, but I hopefully you get the idea. So it's basically, you get one free move and after that you start drawing from the sock and if you get the red, well that's it. That's the end of that turn for that person. And of course obviously if it's going to be six players, I got to give each person their whatevers. And when, once you lose a general, um, Essentially what happens is uh, one of your green cubes is removed. Uh, that's basically what ends up happening. So, you, you know, if you, the gods favor you, you could end up with one extra green cube, which is great. That type of stuff. And anyways, I said, like, like I said, I'll, uh, I'll uh, put the rules up uh, freely available because there's nothing, nothing amazing about them. Okay, that's it. Hope you're having a great time and 
that's about that. And if you do want to see me actually play a few turns or something, I'll, I'll do that. Okay, bye.